Obsessive compulsive disorder um, occurs amongst children, adolescents, and the elderly. 65% of it developed before the age of 25, 15% um, develop OCD before the age of 35. Look at the age of onset, male and females. But the interesting thing is, we actually know that we can actually have the onset of obsessive compulsive disorder well before the age of six, and now we're getting increasing examples of obsessive compulsive disorder occurring beyond the ages of 30 and even into the elderly. What are the um, defining features of obsessive compulsive disorder? Obsessions and compulsions. You've got to have both, although some people have just obsessions alone. And obsessions are really very distressing for the individual to experience. They are recurrent and persistent thoughts, image, um, impulse or images that are experienced as intrusive and inappropriate and cause marked anxiety. That is, a whole lot of things are going on in your head which cause marked distress for you. And they're worries. And those worries are persistent. And you're driven to do something about them by undertaking a compulsion of some kind. A person may attempt to ignore or suppress the obsession, but generally, if they find it very difficult to do so. Or they try to neutralize it with some thought or action, and that's what the compulsion is. The person with a, uh, the obsessions must recognize that the product of his own mind and not the result of thoughts being, in their eyes being transmitted into their mind. The compulsions, these are repetitive behaviors that a person must do in response to the obsession. And what the compulsion does, it alleviates the distress of the obsession. These, um, compulsions are very time-consuming. They can take hours. And recently I was treating a 19-year-old boy who had cleaning obsessions. And he was concerned that his body was contaminated. Three hours in the shower was not norm. And three hours of toilet routines was also the norm. Six hours of toilet routines a day. His life, 19, it wasn't going very far. Mum rang me and we actually treated him and we were able to uh, get him down to half an hour of toilet and showering routines per day using a combination of treatments, which I'll allude to a, mo um, um, a moment. The compulsions can be extremely time consuming. They're always done in a particular way. It was washing their hands, it's washed in a particular way. If soap is used, or when soap is used, it's always done in a particular way. They're very difficult to resist. They're driven to do these. Re the reason why they're driven to do these is because the to get rid of the obsessions or the feelings associated with the condition. They're repetitive, and they simply interfere with people's lives no end. Now, most people, have, we, when we talk about obsessive compulsive disorder, talk about the rituals they can actually see, the overt ones, the washing, the checking, the repeating. But also people have covert ones too, obsessions which just go on in their mind. They may have um, a set of numbers, or they may, say a, they may have a secret code, they may sing a song. But the same, with the same idea though, is that the obsession they're using the, the, the rituals they use, I should say, are there to alleviate the obsession. You just can't see them. So anybody who comes along with obsessive compulsive disorder, what you've got to ask them for, ask them about, is do they have any of these covert or um, these, obsession, uh, these compulsions which you in fact can't see. They're in fact the more, slightly more difficult people to treat. Just what I make that. Um, 
A core features of uh, OCD is people are, they have normal risk of something. Something terrible is going to happen. And these are the checkers. And they can check the doors, the windows, the stoves, you name it. But they're checking because they believe that some, there's a risk factor involved here. Another common one is people are driving. They go over a bump. They realize five kilometers down the road, hey, I may have caused some damage to somebody. So what have they got to do? They've got to go back and check. Of course, they've never done anything. Or they're driving from home and they suddenly say, hey, have I turned the gas off? Have I checked the water? Whatever. And they race home. Who's done that in this audience at some time? Oh my God, I didn't know obsessive compulsive disorder was so common over here. <laughs> well, okay. Pathological doubt um, is, um, has something in fact been done uh, or not been done. And the incompleteness is that um, things must be in order. Okay? Um, and uh, people with this condition make sure things are absolutely in place and they know exactly where things are. I recently had a, um, a girl came to see me. She had this condition very, very severely, and it was all to do with making sure things were in the right place. Her boss thinks she was terrific because his, his, his office was never as tidy. But at home, it got to the stage that they, uh, husband and wife couldn't actually live in the home because if he moved anything, that was a domestic. <laughs> we eventually treated them. They happily continued life, and they... They've had children since. What are some of the most com uh, common obsessions and compulsions, as there you can see from this list? Contamination and uh, checking behavior, washing, doubt. Now, what are the important thing here is that um, pe most people have more than one obsession and most people have more than one compulsion. And one of the interesting things I have uh, uh, is hoarding behavior, and uh, that's becoming quite topical uh, and uh, but people are actually doubting, or well, some studies actually doubting whether hoarding is in fact a form of obsessive compulsive disorder. Here's a person who will wash their hands and they can wash them for hours. The water must be off at a certain volume uh, uh, and also often at a certain temperature. And they'll use a certain type of soap in a, uh, in, uh, uh, over a certain period of time. And not too long ago, I was called to a, doc uh, to a doctor's house and uh, um, to look after the, their daughter who had a, a, um, was spending eight hours in the shower every day. And the amount of soap he went through, or she went through, I should say, was, it was amazing. Uh, eight hours in the shower at night time. And this is an example of things being perfectly in order. And if things aren't perfectly straight, then they get anx anxious about it. And they go around checking, they're making things are kept straight. And they watch at a, what they have a very fine eye for order.